in this episode of Star Trek Attack on the Tactical Table, we're going to be talking about ignoring your opponent's shields. And these are the two primary weapons that will do that. The Chronotron Torpedoes, which comes from the Crinum Time Ship, and the Hypothermic Charge, which comes from the Vidya Warship Battle Cruiser. So they're basically just your standard secondary weapons. Um, attack, target lock, spin your target lock to perform this attack with the chronotons, or with the hypothermic, it's just a disable, so you don't have to spend your target lock, which is nice. And again, these both ignore shields. And they have different ranges, obviously. And they also have penalties. Um, the hypothermic charge can only be purchased for a Vidian ship, so you're going to have to put it on a Vidian ship. And then the chronotons um, have the additional ability of being fired from forward and rear arcs, and but they cost plus six points, so 12 points for any ship other than a Krenum weapon ship. So that's quite a bit of tax on either one of those. But I think that the overall effect, and I have played these cards quite a bit, I really can't complain too much about them. The Chronoton torpedoes are just absolutely amazing. Now, if you are playing cross-faction, the best ship think about putting the chronotons on would be the Enterprise E. Because you can fire a torpedo at an enemy ship without needing a target lock. So that way you can spend your target lock to increase the damage instead. Again, you're talking a 13 point upgrade to do that though. So that's 45 points just for that. And gives you 5 points for say Ahab Picard or Captain Spock or something. Not much else. So that's what the entire build would be. Is the Enterprise E with chronoton torpedoes. If you don't want to pay the faction penalty, there are a couple options. There's unfortunately not a lot of mirror universe ships that or the nice thing about Chronotons is they're both independent and mirror so, mirror, so you have the option of getting some more options. The so first, of course, you can just put them on one of the Krenum weapon ships. Um, nice thing is they do have battle stations. And battle stations really makes a big difference when um, firing these kind of torpedoes. Most of the mirror ships, which are ROM, do not. Uh, there's the Cardassians, Klingons, and Romulan-based ships, none of which have battle stations. So that's how you can cut the points, but I think the Krenum weapon ship, the Kaya Prime, has a lot of hull. I mean, it's 6'4", um, but it only has a 90 degree front arc, and it's overall not that great of a ship. Uh, so look at a couple good options. It would be the ISS Defiant, which has the front and rear arcs. I think it has a rear arc anyway. Double check that real quick. Yes, it does have a rear arc and battle stations and the weapon slots to take it. So you're not paying a faction penalty, you're still paying the plus six, but you're not paying that faction penalty. And probably the hardest one to get for a decent um, mirror universe ship for this is going to be the US Enterprise D from the Assimilation Target Prime price ship, which is right now one of the most expensive attack wing ships out there um, but not only does it have battle stations but it has the um, ability to disable one of your shields to gain plus one attack and it also has a rear firing arc so again this is one of the hardest ones to get um, but I think it's worth it fortunately because it does take both the target lock fire the chronotons. Your best captain again is also from the Assimilation Target Prime, which is the Mirror Universe Riker, which basically allows you to store tokens so you can take free actions later. So first thing you take a battle station, store one, and then you can do your target lock and battle stations, fire your chronotons with battle stations and quality. Um, again, this is from the Assimilation Target Prime, a very expensive captain. And other than that, there's really not a lot of good options for Mirror Universe captains. Uh, unfortunately, you do have um, Tomalock. When attacking your primary weapon, is there a scan token? You, you can reroll all of your blank results, which again is a nice way to use that scan, but there's not a, way, a lot of ways. It's still in action, and you're probably going to be using it to either re enable the torpedoes or to get a target lock to fire them. But 
if they were to get the target lock, use a scan is essentially another way to not only cut the defense dice, but also reroll um, blanks, which is not bad. Or if you have some crew slots, you could try Garrick. You may discard one of your crew upgrades to get one attack dice. So that's not a bad option. Unfortunately, yeah, there's just not a lot of good mirror option, mirror universe captains for this. You can always just use Miles O'Brien. Um, he's got elite ta talent. He's five skill. Can repair a shield, repair damage to your hollow shields for an action. Not actually bad. Um, gives you a decent captain skill and an extra ability, unrelated to the chronotons, but it's better than nothing, in my opinion. So the other option is, of course, is um, independent faction, that opens up a lot more. Uh, you can go with the Alpha Hunter, which unfortunately only has that front firing arc, but it does have the um, extra action, so you can try to get into an arc. If you take the uh, car upgrade, his, his, his ability on higher skill captains, to attack lower skill captains, I mean, would include this, so you'd get six attack dice. So that's one option is the Alpha Hunter for an independent faction ship. But again, you're still looking at the limited abilities of a lack of a battle stations. And not a lot of really good, decent um, independent ships to use that on. So if you're doing cap faction pure, it's gonna be a lot harder to use the Chronotons, they're not that great, but if you're gonna be using them on cross-factioning, then I think the Enterprise is the best way to go on that, for sure. Now, let's talk about the hypothermic charge. Again, it can only be purchased for a Vidian Starship, so you have to use your Vidian Starship for this, unfortunately. And the Vidian Battlecruiser doesn't have a great maneuver dial. Um, it does have the two white turns, which would help a lot. Here's your basic Vidian ship. Again, five hull, two shield. Oh, this is the generic one. So two weapons and a crew. So it's pretty much designed to fire these things. Um, two evades. I mean, obviously it doesn't have a lot of attack for itself, so the hypothermic charge really makes a difference not having to punch through shields. And again, this is only a disable, it is not a spinning a target lock. So that will give you the target lock for quality. And they also have battle stations as well, which helps a lot as well. So you're probably running your Vidian commander, if you can do that, because he gets plus one attack die when using the hypothermic charge. And that's, again, going to help quite a bit, bumping it up to four with battle stations or target lock or even both. Uh, this really going to make a difference. Um, again, with uh, you're not going to be able to use the improved effector screens because the Vidian ship is too big, but still being able to um, have a lot of, there's not a lot of shields, but there's still quite a bit to punch around the Vidian starship. And the two defense dice definitely helps. Um, skill Sassin, that's not bad. So you can actually build an entire list just around these two cards. And, you, and if you're going to try this out, you really need to build the entire list around these cards. You could even take another generic Vidian ship with just a generic captain and a hypothermic charge if you really wanted to. For a kind of a three ship build, something firing the chronotons like the Alpha Hunter firing the chronotons. And then the, the uh, Vidian ship firing the, uh, um, the hypothermic charges. Again, you probably don't want to go anything else besides those, uh, just because it is going to start to get very prohibitively expensive very quickly um, with those chronotons. So, the these cards, well, they sound really awesome that they ignore the shields which actually is an amazing ability. 
the, the faction limitations on them, if you're playing any sort of a faction pure, really hurts. And of course, and then there are other restrictions on them. These can only be on NVIDIA, and these plus six points for anything that's not a Krenum weapon ship is really going to put a, a rink, uh, big dent in your list. But if, you, if your entire plan is to ignore shields, this is not a bad way to build a list, at least for fun. It may not be entirely competitive. I've, built, I've played with Carnotons several times, and when they hit, I've one-shot it. It's not hard to one-shot a ship if you have any sort of quality built into it. So, thanks for watching this episode of Star Trek Attacking Tactical Table, and I'll talk to you later.